Hi, my name is uh, Uwe Forsberg here at DidCon. Most of the time when I've been out, uh, one of the things that caused a lot of issues with this reordering is um, when you reserve parts. So that has to be clear. It seemed like in some systems that it's not included in the consumption, in some case it is, and then they don't use it. So there's some process issue there that's not working, and it must be part of the planning process that causing that. So we talked about these watch outs in, in uh, replenishment. You know, changes in lead times, are they delivering on time, the vendor, supplier? Automatic restocking can cause issues. Uh, if you parts kit and reserve parts, in my opinion, that should be the best way to handle that is to say, if you have kitted a part, it's consumed out of storeroom, or you put it in a different storage location, which people cannot take parts out of. So that's another way to do that. Return parts. Uh, if you don't use, use parts, uh, I've been to several places now. If you take a part out of storeroom, you're not allowed to take it back. I mean, that to me doesn't make no sense to me at all. And in my opinion, uh, and I'm saying this, I'm being open and honest here and saying the storeroom was managed by accounting and finance, and they just made it easy for themselves. And then the so now you're sitting with a storeroom, everything is organized in there. The, the guys can't return parts, so now we're sitting in the whole shop out there with all these parts that was not used that needed to be returned, but they're not allowed to. Uh, you can might have increased consumption or very choppy consumption in general. Not a good system. Uh, but I think for consuming those things, vending machines is a very good way to, to manage your stock because you're going to manage Make sure you don't run out all the time if you set it up right. So, so you don't want to run out of parts. I mean, that's the idea. Uh, so if you're calculating here saying, well, what is your annual usage? It's 10 units per year. The economic order quantity is 7 units. The lead time is 3 weeks. So your usage rate is basically per month is you have 10 per year. It's 12 months, so 0.83 parts per month is what you use. So what do we want a minimum to be? I mean, we want one on hand all the time. We say that the lead time is three weeks, and we use less than one a month. So setting the minimum to one will make sense in this case. So the reorder point could be equal to the lead time demand plus the safety stock. So in this case, the lead time demand is 0.83 times uh, how many months? So this is 0.75. This is three out of four weeks plus one. So you get up to reorder 0.162, which is really two if you round it off. And the maximum point is really the minimum plus the EOQ. So that should be one plus seven equals eight units. So what's the reorder cycle? Max units in stock divided by the monthly demand. So you see that end up to be close to 10 months. That's your reorder cycle. You could argue a little bit how you calculate that, but you, you're saying, you know, the, the purchasing department and maybe all the costs around running the purchasing department, uh, what is the average cost? You know, if you, you, one thing, simple thing is to say, if you include maybe also the facility that is sitting in, how many orders do they do a year and how, uh, what's the total value of all the things they ordered and divide it up that way. That's maybe a little simplified. But I would say the, per, the accounting or purchasing should know about what their estimated, I would say, fixed PO cost is. Here's an exercise you're gonna do. Uh, I think this one is a little tricky, but it based on what I just show you, you should be able to figure this out. Exercise 24 in your exercise book. So here's the main fan motor at the coal mine located in Silesia, Poland. So this uh, fan motor has some information about annual usage of the ball bearing and the, and the cage rotor. Uh, they have the EOQ for 
those two parts. How to lead time in days, and the shortest period of usage, and the amount of pieces used in equipment. And of course the ball bearing is four of them. There's two bearings on each end of the shaft, and the rotor is just one of them used in it. So what is the reorder point for each of the two parts? How long is the reorder cycle for each of the two parts? What factors may make it necessary to deviate from the formula? And uh, I think we can, uh, after training, we can send you the answers to these, uh, all of these exercises. I got notes on that, uh, if you need it. Please visit our website at idcon.com. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm.